The Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railroad reporting mark RBMN, sometimes shortened to the Reading and Northern Railroad, is a regional railroad operating in eastern Pennsylvania with headquarters located in Port Clinton. The Reading and Northern provides freight service on over 400 miles of track with this main line consisting of the Reading Division between Reading, Pennsylvania and Packerton, Pennsylvania and the Lehigh Division between Lehighton, Pennsylvania and DuPont, Pennsylvania. In addition to freight service, passenger excursions also run along the RNN system. The Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway was a tourist railroad that operated passenger excursions along the RNN between Jim Thorpe and Lehigh Gorge State Park. That discontinued service effective November 25, 2019, due to a dispute over an amusement tax levied by the borough of Jim Thorpe. Since then, I do believe that those passenger excursions have been reinstated. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. RNN also operates passenger excursions from Reading, Pennsylvania and Port Clinton to Jim Thorpe. And starting around a year or two ago, they're now offering passenger excursions from Wilkesbury to points all around the system. The Reading and Northern acquired line spun off by Conrail in North Central Pennsylvania in December 1980. Many former Conrail entities own trackage in this area, including the line from Port Clinton to Tamaqua, which was the former Reading Line's Little Schoolkill Bridge. Opportunity knocked on the railroad's door in 1990 with another 130 miles of railroad acquired of the former Conrail territory. The Reading Cluster is trackage that was comprised of former Reading Railroad Company property extending along the Schoolkill River Valley from Reading to the heart of the anthracite coal fields in Schoolkill County. An unprecedented growth in traffic forced the RNN to upgrade the physical characteristics of the new railroad. A turnaround in the anthracite coal industry has become the mainstay of the Reading Division. Today, 
More than 50 customers on the Reading Division is served with a diversity of commodities ranging from coal to bird seed and from potatoes to even plastic. During the mid-1990s, the RNN saw more opportunity to expand their operations. Conrail began shedding trackage that was not part of its big X plan. Conrail's Lehigh line with over 100 former miles of Lehigh Valley Railroad heritage was a line that was considered marginal in Conrail's eyes. RNN did not balk at the opportunity and placed a bid for the line. In 1996, the RNN was named the successful bidder of what would become the RNN Lehigh Division. The line stretches from the southern foot of the Pocono Mountains at Lehighton to the historic cities of Wilkes-Barre and Scranton and farther into Wyoming County. An interesting side note to this acquisition would be the Canadian Pacific Railway's trackage rights that were inherited from Conrail. With these two lucrative divisions, the Reading and Northern proceeded into the next century as one of Pennsylvania's largest regional operators. Originally known as the Blue Mountain and Reading Railroad, the railroad was founded in 1983, as we talked about earlier, to provide freight service on the former Pennsylvania Railroad Schoolkill Division between Hamburg, Pennsylvania and Temple, Pennsylvania. Starting in 1985, the BMNR, that's the Blue Mountain and Reading, began operating passenger excursions over the line and two steam locomotives, the ex-Gulf Mobile and Northern Railroad 462 number 425, and the X Reading Company T1484-2102. The Blue Mountain and Reading also began operating three additional state-owned lines. Additionally, the Blue Mountain and Reading entered into a partnership with the Reading Company Technical and Historical Society who leased track space in Leesport and in return leased two diesel locomotives and assorted passenger cars for use on the line. In 1990, the Blue Mountain and Reading took ownership of 150 miles of track located in the coal region north of Reading. Shortly thereafter, the company was renamed the Reading, Blue Mountain and Northern and relocated its headquarters from Hamburg to Port Clinton. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, the Reading and Northern acquired more lines in northeastern Pennsylvania, primarily in Reading Railroad, Central Railroad of New Jersey and Lehigh Valley Railroad Heritage. In the mid-1990s, the Reading and Northern discontinued the regularly scheduled passenger operations between Hamburg and Temple and instead focused on occasional excursions throughout the rest of its system. The partnership between the RNN and Reading Company Technical and Historical Society had more or less ended by this point, but the group still leased track space in Leesport until 2008 when they moved to the Hamburg Yard and opened the Reading Railroad Heritage Museum. Despite the discontinuation of the Hamburg to Temple excursions, steam operations continued. In 1995, both of the Reading and Northern steam locomotives were present at the grand opening of Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, though only the 425 was operational. The two would remain at Steamtown until 1997. Between 1998 and 2009, all steam operations were suspended.
In 2005, regularly scheduled passenger excursions resumed with the introduction of the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway in Jim Thorpe. In December 2016, the Reading and Northern announced that it would invest $2 million to construct a train station at Pennsylvania Route 61 and Bellevue Avenue in Muhlenberg Township outside of Reading called the Reading Outer Station with plans to operate passenger excursions from there to Jim Thorpe. On May 29, 2017, the first round-trip excursion from Reading Outer Station to Jim Thorpe operated utilizing refurbished rail diesel cars that were built by the Bud Company in the 1950s and formerly operated along the Pottsville line between Pottsville and Philadelphia via Reading until SEPTA discontinued diesel service in 1981. Between 2009 and 2010, the Reading and Northern expanded operations due to the emergence of the Marcellus Shale natural gas drilling in northeastern Pennsylvania. The railroad spent $100,000 to transform an outdated and lightly used Pittston Yard near Wilkesbury. The RNN also purchased two new locomotives, 101 rail cars, and six miles of track between Monroton and Tawanda, Pennsylvania, where much of the northeastern Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale economic activity is focused. In 2017, the connection of the Hazleton shaft and the Hazleton Hiller drying plant to the railroad was finally finished. While wearing a black former Norfolk Southern paint scheme, Reading and Northern SD40-2 number 3062 entered the West Cressona, Pennsylvania paint shop on August 7, 2023. It emerged on September 15, 2023 as the RNN number 1983. It's decorated in a paint scheme that celebrates the 40th anniversary of the Reading and Northern Railroad. The locomotive is a tribute to the first days of the railroad operations in 1983 when the railroad was originally named the Blue Mountain and Reading, which operated 13 miles of track from Temple to Hamburg, Pennsylvania. Today, the Reading and Northern operates over 400 miles of track in nine counties. This former Burlington Northern and Norfolk Southern unit features the original Blue Mountain and Reading Herald on the nose and a blue color that was used by the first Blue Mountain and Reading diesel units in 1983. The Reading and Northern Railroad recently surpassed 1 million tons of anthracite moved over its railroad for the first time in its history. It's been the Reading and Northern's owner, Andy Muller's goal to exceed the 1 million ton mark since December 1990 when he purchased from Conrail the rail line serving Pennsylvania's anthracite coal region. Prior to Conrail's sale, the tracks had been in disrepair and rail tonnage had been in decline. After acquiring the lines, Muller began investing in the properties. He brought the tracks back into operating condition and he acquired freight cars to handle the coal business. Unlike when I was younger, nowadays I can actually take time out to appreciate the holidays of the year and to celebrate them for all of their work. But one business that never stops operating no matter what the day is, is transportation. Products and goods have to move seamlessly 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
Such was the day, New Year's Eve, when I got the word that the Reading and Northern Pittston, Pennsylvania yard job, better known to us locals as the YJPI, was working Taylor Yard. The plan was to drop off a handful of cars and to pick up 20. After the inbounds had been dropped, they had to make a run up their Kaiser Valley track to pick up empties from the Kane Warehouse. That's where I caught them from my car at the Luzerne Street grade crossing. Kane Warehouse is one of the RNN's biggest customers in the area. It receives almost daily deliveries of wine and liquor from the West Coast. It's one of the few customers in northeastern Pennsylvania that exclusively receives freight cars from the Western Railroads as well as cryogenic and insulated boxcars. Once the empties were pulled out of Kane, the next stop for today's crew was to the Scranton runaround track where the locomotives uncoupled from the empties, ran around them, and pulled back south to Taylor Yard. A belated Christmas present for me was the eclectic power combination on today's train. Seeing three locomotives on a yard job is rare enough, but having three locomotives so uniquely different from one another is another rarity in and of itself. The 2004 is an EMD SD38 of Penn Central Heritage, while the now rebuilt EMD GP39RN is an ex Santa Fe GP30R. The end cab switcher is an ex-Lehigh Valley EMD SW8. Once the runaround move was made, it was down the line to Taylor Yard, now with the SD38 leading. A shot that I've been wanting to get for some time now was at the entrance of the Kaiser Valley Industrial Park. Getting this shot successfully can only be accomplished during the months of the barren winter when the trees are free of the thick, hard to see through foliage of spring, summer, and fall.
At Taylor Yard, I watched the oddball threesome from the comfort of my car, paying attention to the notion that each locomotive is wearing a unique RNN paint scheme. The two end pieces are sporting an original version of the Reading and Northern livery, while the middle Jeep is wearing the original Philadelphia and Reading paint scheme. The yard crew reverses to pick up the 20 inbound loaded boxes. This train will be tail heavy moving back to Pittston as the empty cars are all up front with the heavily laden ones on the tail.
A horn blast signals that this train is ready to roll. As is the norm with the inbound freight for the RNN at Taylor, today's breakfast consists of the common Canadian Pacific and Canadian National boxes. I don't know for sure, but I believe that these box cars are loaded with scrap paper and go to the new Translo facility in Ransom. As is in the train symbol, YJPI, this train's return destination is the former Lehigh Valley's Coxton Yard, today Reading and Northern's Pittston Yard. Pittston Yard has seen a massive resurgence in recent years. Coxton Yard was the Wyoming Valley hub for the Lehigh Valley Railroad. The Delaware, Lackawanna and Western's Bloomsburg Line, part of which is today's Reading and Northern Scranton branch, ran along the south end of the Y leading into Coxton Yard but was never a part of the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western. The Bloomsburg branch and the Lehigh Valley's main line crossed each other at a diamond in Pittston. The Lehigh Valley's main line from Wilkesbury and the mountain cutoff met at the south end of Coxton Yard. Coxton Yard started being called Pittston Yard when it was taken over by Conrail. It's now called either Coxton, Durier and sometimes even Muller Yard since it has been taken over by the Reading and Northern in the mid-1990s. By the time I got there, GP38-2 number 2011 was occupying the Scranton branch and was in the process of being moved to the newly constructed side tracks. Only a few minutes after the jeep cleared the branch, the YJPI rumbled into Pittston Yard with its long manifest, shaking the camera mount as it rolled by. It swept around the curve, past the working wigwags, and into the yard to finish today's work.
Before the warning bells of the Great Crossing could even stop dinging, the 2011 was repositioning itself back at its original perch on the Scranton branch entrance of the yard, which concluded this day of unexpected New Year's Eve rail fan. Hot off of the memory card, I just shot this train today. A few videos back, we talked about the push-pull operations of railroading. And the most common term used today for pushing trains is called the shove. Don't know what brought about today's operational reversal, but the PISB, now returning home as the SBPI, maybe that was it, shoved their long train the entire way home. Now it's about a seven mile divide between the Norfolk Southern Yard at Taylor and the Reading and Northern's own Pittston Yard and at a chilly 42 degrees, the conductor had the wind in his face and a cold ride back home to home base. Despite the challenge, the conductor was in high spirits and even found the ability to give me a friendly wave despite hanging off of the side of a cold steel hopper car. And if you look closely around the 2 minute 32 second mark in this video, it appears that the conductor had his lunch pail with him the whole time that he was riding a 7 mile show. Talk about lunch on the go.
Originally known as the Blue Mountain and Reading Railroad, the railroad was founded in 1983, as we talked about earlier, to provide freight service on the former Pennsylvania Railroad Schoolkill Division between Hamburg, Pennsylvania and Temple, Pennsylvania. Starting in 1985, the BMNR, that's the Blue Mountain and Reading, began operating passenger excursions over the line and two steam locomotives, the ex-Gulf Mobile and Northern Railroad 462 number 425 and the ex-Reading Company T1484-2102. The Blue Mountain and Reading also began operating three additional state-owned lines. Additionally, the Blue Mountain and Reading entered into a partnership with the Reading Company Technical and Historical Society who leased track space in Leesport and in return leased two diesel locomotives and assorted passenger cars for use on the line. In 1990, the Blue Mountain and Reading took ownership of 150 miles of track located in the coal region north of Reading. Shortly thereafter, the company was renamed the Reading, Blue Mountain and Northern and relocated its headquarters from Hamburg to Port Clinton. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, the Reading and Northern acquired more lines in northeastern Pennsylvania, primarily a Reading Railroad, Central Railroad of New Jersey and Lehigh Valley Railroad Heritage. In the mid-1990s, the Reading and Northern discontinued the regularly scheduled passenger operations between Hamburg and Temple and instead focused on occasional excursions throughout the rest of its system. The partnership between the RNN and Reading Company Technical and Historical Society had more or less ended by this point, but the group still leased track space in Leesport until 2008 when they moved to the Hamburg Yard and opened the Reading Railroad Heritage Museum. Despite the discontinuation of the Hamburg to Temple excursions, steam operations continued. In 1995, both of the Reading and Northern steam locomotives were present at the grand opening of Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, though only the 425 was operational. The two would remain at Steamtown until 1997. Between 1998 and 2009, all steam operations were suspended. In 2005, regularly scheduled passenger excursions resumed with the introduction of the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway in Jim Thorpe. In December 2016, the Reading and Northern announced that it would invest $2 million to construct a train station at Pennsylvania Route 61 and Bellevue Avenue in Muhlenberg Township outside of Reading called the Reading Outer Station with plans to operate passenger excursions from there to Jim Thorpe. On May 29, 2017, the first round trip excursion from Reading Outer Station to Jim Thorpe operated, utilizing refurbished rail diesel cars that were built by the Bud Company in the 1950s and formerly operated along the Pottsville line between Pottsville and Philadelphia via Reading until SEPTA discontinued diesel service in 1981. Between 2009 and 2010, the Reading and Northern expanded operations due to the emergence of the Marcellus Shale natural gas drilling in northeastern Pennsylvania. The railroad spent $100,000 to transform an outdated and lightly used Pittston Yard near Wilkes-Barre. The RNN also purchased two new locomotives, 101 rail cars, and six miles of track between Monroton and Tawanda, Pennsylvania, where much of the northeastern Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale economic activity is focused. Around 2009, the Reading and Northern bought the assets of the Tawanda Monroton Shippers Lifeline Railroad from former owner Joseph Zadruski of Scranton, who'd owned and operated the line since 1979. The line is about 40 miles north of Reading and Northern's northernmost terminus in Mahoopany, Pennsylvania, Wyoming County, and was originally part of the Susquehanna and New York Railroad. The trackage from Sayre to Monroton was taken over by the Lehigh Valley when the rest of the S and N Y was abandoned and demolished in 1942. The part bought by the R and N starts at Packer Avenue in Tawanda and goes south toward Monroton. The rest of the T M S L is owned by Schaefer's Feed Service, who was once the line's main customer. At Packer Avenue, the line connects to the Norfolk Southern, which is leased by the Lehigh Railway. In its last days of ownership under Joe Z. The line was operated with two part-time employees. The intent of the line's purchase was to market the TMSL segment to natural gas producers. At the time, Trains Magazine had reported that the RNN had bought the 1.5-mile northern end but will operate over the entire six-mile line. That was over a decade ago. Today, it doesn't appear that much is happening on the TMSL, but hopefully that will change in the future.
Tawanda, Pennsylvania is a small town near the New York State border and is the county seat of Bradford located about 66 miles northwest of Wilkesbury along the Susquehanna River. The town was settled in 1784 and incorporated in 1828 and was known for its industrial interests which included flour, plating and silk mills, a foundry and a machine shop, a manufacturer of talking machines, cut glass, toys and furniture. During the turn of the 20th century, the population of Tawanda was just under 4,000. As of the 2010 census, the population was just under 3,000. As is the case with most business centers in America, one cannot overstate the importance that the railroads played to the development of Tawanda as a commercial center beginning with the first Pennsylvania and New York train in 1869. In the years following, approximately six passenger, four freight, and nine coal trains arrived at and departed Tawanda each way daily, and no part of town was spared. Train traffic persisted even on Sundays when their passing interfered with the services at the nearby churches. The red brick structure to the left of this photo was built by Pennsylvania and New York in 1884 as a freight depot. It was later used as a station by several rail lines including the Barclay, the Lehigh Valley, the State Line in Sullivan, and the Susquehanna and New York. The north side of the building, which you can see here, housed the station agent, the train dispatcher, and the Western Union operator. The freight room was in the rear of the building. In 1922, the Susquehanna and New York constructed the white building just visible to the left. Smaller than the freight depot, this one-story building of steel and stucco has an asbestos roof. The station had three rooms, a ticket office, a freight room, and a passenger waiting room. The building was city steam heated and electric lighted and the Postal Telegraph Company also had a room in this new station. I apologize that I can't show you the whole station but I accidentally deleted the photo. Not shown in this video is the main passenger depot for the rail lines which was located in the north part of Tawanda near the intersection of Hawes Street and Packer Avenue.